okay so as i was telling you that uh, uh, we can bring this y actually out of the uh, in, in, in the denominator so that this x by y becomes the dimensionless ratio and then further we can take k common from this numerator and then k common from this denominator uh, thereby converting all these numerator and denominator quantities into zeta and r as we have done it uh, done this before as well in case of magnification factor in the previous lecture and we see that uh, this x by y which is now a dimensionless ratio will be represented in terms of zeta and r uh, which is also dimensionless numbers so zeta is damping ratio it is dimensionless r is frequency ratio it is also dimensionless and this x by y is then known as the displacement transmissibility and so the displacement transmissibility tells you that how much uh, amplitude of vibration your equipment or your inertia element has uh, achieved when some displacement is given to the base when some vibrations are applied to the base so it is the ratio of mass amplitude to base amplitude and therefore you can see that here we can control this displacement transmissibility by controlling the values of zeta and r so it's a very important dimensionless uh, ratio the displacement transmissibility which is uh, which becomes important when we are studying vibration isolation so the next point could be to uh, plot these ratios you know these the, the value of this ratio x by y in terms of different values of r and zeta and we have done this before as well in the previous lecture where we plotted the magnification factor on the y-axis and the frequency ratio on the x-axis so similarly we're going to plot now uh, this expression in terms of zeta and r and so we can extract some important points we can see that uh, this displacement transmissibility can be controlled by changing the values of zeta and r and the displacement transmissibility increases as r tends to 1 so you can see that these curves tend to increase uh, when r increases from 0 and it approaches the value of 1 that is near resonance uh, so all these curves will going to reach there we will start increasing except the curve at zeta equals to 1 okay so all these rest of the curves are plotted at zeta values that are less than 1 this means that that this situation of of uh, you know tra displacement transmissibility is uh, quite important for under dam cases because for uh, for critically dam cases and for over dam cases you cannot notice uh, a very high value of displacement transmissibilities so this uh, of course if you will remove the damping then you can expect expect very high values of displacement transmissibilities especially at at near resonance that is not good and the displacement transmissibility will reach its maximum uh, values only for zeta greater than zero less than one that is only for under under uh, sorry under dam cases uh, you will going to observe these peaks so peaks will be observed for only under dam cases that is zeta less than one and these peaks will going to appear at this value of the frequency ratio one upon two zeta uh, into under root one plus eight zeta square minus one raised to power half at this value of r on the horizontal axis you will going to have these peaks and you can observe that these peaks are these peaks are occurring slightly you know before r equals to one so for any value of zeta the displacement transmissibility begins to decrease as r exceeds one so for any value of zeta all these curves you can see they they, they tend to fall okay and so the displacement transmissibility begins to reduce as you go beyond the value of r equals to one that is you increase the frequency ratio they all become unity when r is under root two so when r is this value under root 2 you see all the curves are meeting at this point and this represents displacement transmissibility 
transmissibility equals to 1. So this means that uh, the displacement of your inertia element is, is, is exactly the same as the displacement of your base. Okay. So at least this, this situation is better than uh, these, uh, these all situations. Okay. You don't want your your machine or your uh, equipment to to have a very high value of displacement transmissibility when when the base suddenly starts to vibrate you always uh, want to want it to have them near one or maybe less than one would be much better so further continuously decreasing if r is greater than under root two so you see that when you go beyond r under root two so all these curves uh, are they are continuously decreasing and now they are showing a displacement transmissibility which is less than one that is a very good result so this means that uh, if you if your if your uh, you know machine is operating at a very high uh, frequency okay so this r is actually equal to omega over omega n and if this value of r is greater than under root 2 okay so this means that if r is greater than under root 2 uh, so this means that omega upon omega n is greater than under root 2 so omega n uh, must be you can say that omega n must be greater than omega upon under root 2 so so in the in this region when r is greater than under root 2 okay or you can say that such that uh, the natural frequency of your machine of your device is greater than the frequency of operation or the frequency of applied excitation base excitation upon under root 2 if this is the case Okay. Uh, then you will be in this region and the displacement transmissibility will always be less than one so this is a very valuable result okay for this value of natural frequency of your machine okay so when r uh, that that is equal to omega over omega n it is greater than under root 2 or omega upon under root 2 is greater than uh, omega n sorry so it's not greater actually it's it's less than it okay so when omega n uh, is uh, less than this this result omega upon under root 2 then you will going to uh, you will be in this region and uh, this you will going to have the displacement transmissibility uh, lower than one okay. so it's better to to operate in this region but if you are operating at a very high very high uh, natural frequency then material fatigue will going to uh, be there and you have to take care of that as well so the, so so it will be a compromise okay so we conclude that these displacement transmissibilities are more important uh, for under dam cases because uh, they are likely to have the maximum peaks okay and then if you are operating at r greater than under root 2 then your displacement transmissibility will be always less than one irrespective of the damping value so your natural frequency must be must satisfy this this relationship less than omega upon under root 2 in order to be in this region and ir irrespective of the damping coefficients uh, so we we end today's lecture at this point
and we'll going to uh, meet again in the new lecture next week thank you